Good day. I'm Lisa Rowe and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, January 10, 2024. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has officially opened the rehabilitated gravel lane in Montego Bay. The roadway is described as the first brick road in the second city and was repaired at a cost of $2 million by the St. James Municipal Corporation. The popular stretch of road underwent a well-needed facelift with the installation of bricks and metal bars to prevent the entry of motor vehicles. During Monday's opening ceremony, Mr. Holness said the repair of the roadway was part of the mandate given to the island's local government. I'm particularly pleased to see this. I, I'm, you, you can't see it now, but as you walk up this lane, you will see how it has just been lifted. Purely by changing a rough gravel surface yes. into a smoothly paved area using bricks. So the aesthetics, how the place looks, has been improved, and that is the mandate that we have given to our local government. Mr. Holness added that while national development was necessary, citizens must feel development in their communities. The simple thing can elevate how people feel about themselves just by how we improve the community. So important things like garbage collection, keeping our streets clean, improving our markets, and paving our roadways. Those things make people feel better about themselves and their community. Still in Montego Bay, the Prime Minister has welcomed the opening of a new multi-billion dollar bakery facility in the city as more evidence of Jamaica's investment attractiveness. He hailed the operators of the National Baking Company for the move during a symbolic breaking of the bread to mark the opening of the new facility on Monday. The development is in keeping with government's thrust towards increased productivity in 2024. This new plant of $6.7 billion will increase employment directly and indirectly in the area. You will probably have about 80 new employees in, in the plant, or more than that. But you will integrate technology in the plant to improve productivity. As you have said it, repetitive and routine actions, those will be replaced by technology. And therefore, the quality of the workforce that you will have will be a higher level trained workforce to take on higher order technical skills translates into higher paid jobs. Mr. Holness asserted that investments in people would also support peace in the society, which is another area of focus by the government this year. A big part of it is making the investments that will pull the people in. We will train to higher order skills so that they can get income, so that they don't have to be drawn into crime. So the truth is, therefore, our industrialists, our businessmen, our small business people have an important role to play in getting us to peace. The government has announced plans to expand the Type 5 Montego Bay Comprehensive Health Center in St. James. This is part of the ongoing commitment to enhance and develop primary health care facilities across the island. Prime Minister Andrew Holness indicates that under the guidance of the Minister of Health and Wellness, the government is acquiring property adjacent to the health center for the expansion. This investment will pave the way for the growth of the health center, which recorded more than 67,000 visits in 2023. So what it means is that the capacity for early intervention in health crises will be expanded in our primary care. The government is cognizant of the issues we all face in health. We hear your cries daily and we are moving as quickly as possible to improve our ability to serve you. Mr. Holness says that approximately $400 million was spent over the past five years to provide quality health care services to the residents in St. James. The services were also bolstered by the acquisition of 16 ambulances for the Western region. Significant resources have been spent. But this is not just spending widely. This is spending strategically. Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining Floyd Green has announced that a crop restoration and establishment program, CREP, 
will be implemented in the next fiscal year to help rehabilitate the coffee industry. Minister Green points out that the coffee sector produced 288,196 boxes of coffee last year, equivalent to 1.2 million kilograms. This marks a 16.4% increase over 2022. He believes that the new program, which will assist 5,000 coffee producers and 102 farm families, will further boost the sector and increase coffee production even more for this year. We're going to be focusing on sustainable growth by ensuring that we embark on our biggest ever replanting program that Jamaica has seen for Blue Mountain. Our objective is over the next three to five years to move to 450,000 boxes of coffee and the ultimate aim is to boost farmer productivity and to secure enduring prosperity for our coffee sector, especially our Blue Mountain coffee sector. The minister was speaking at the Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival's press launch in Kingston on Tuesday. He also revealed that his ministry, along with tourism and industry, investment and commerce, would collaborate on a comprehensive plan to address the road network in the Blue Mountain coffee region. This is in addition to developing strategies to ensure that coffee producers receive a fair price for their product. And finally, there is still room for improvement. That's the advice from Chief Justice Brian Sykes to members of the judiciary who were sworn into service in a ceremony at King's House on Monday. He counseled the judges that although 2023 was a reasonable year for the judiciary, with the parish courts confirming its backlog-free status, Jamaicans want court matters disposed of in the shortest possible time. He said the parish courts could improve their performance for this year by maximizing on time. Where we can improve in the parish courts is in terms of we can still reduce the time from this standpoint. The, the data is telling us that the courts sit on average three hours per day out of the five. So despite the backlog free status, it means that they have approximately two hours in the day that are still underutilized, which means that cases can be brought forward to fill that period of time. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Lisa Rowe. Thanks for watching.